John, I can hit you with that. First, to find us graffiti. Street art has had a long history in America. Originating from the 20s, the demons of New York would paint public spaces to signify their power. This is where street art gets its negative connotation. It was a sign of rebellion that many youth would partake in. They used this to express their feelings about the society, culture, and political climate of their time. There was a street art movement that was synonymous to various subcultures. Punk and rap music was ultimately linked to this during the 80s because they wanted to test the social norms of the time. This form of expression was, and still is illegal, with fines up to $10,000 for possible jail time. But many are seeing this as a new wave of an art form. Now, modern artists like Bainsey and Neils have taken the concept of an illegal act in creating pieces that go against the traditional art form. There are still arguments on whether street art is just that, art or destruction of property. The history of visual art started with tagging sketching names on public property like graffiti in the 1970s and in the 1980s beginning to inspire people who did chalk drawings in the New York City subway systems. Visual art or art forms such as painting, drawings, printmaking, sculpturing, photographing, videoing, frame making, and designs. Street art is visual art created in public locations. Other terms for this type of art includes independent public art, post graffiti, and neo graffiti and it's also closely related to guerrilla art. Common forms in media include spray paint graffiti, stencil graffiti, poster art, sticker art, and sculpture. Street art is a form of artwork that is displayed in the community on its surrounding buildings like streets, trains, and other public viewed services. Many instances come from the form of guerrilla art which is composed to make a public statement about the society and the artist's lives within. The work was moved from the beginning of graffiti and vandalism to a new mode where artists work to bring messages or just simply beauty to the audience. Some artists use smart vandalism as a way to raise awareness to social and political issues. <clears throat> Others simply see urban, spaces as an untapped format for personal artwork. Traditional graffiti artists have primarily used spray paint to produce the artwork. Street art in other many medias. New media forms such as projection onto large city buildings are increasing popular tools for street artists. Although street art and theater do not have a direct relationship like street art does with the actual art side, it can be seen, it can be seen in theater productions such as musicals. For example, in productions set in large cities such as New York City or Los Angeles are where street art is most prevalent in. This is seen in the musical Rent, which takes place in New York and shows various instances of street art as one can see pictured. Street art may also be seen in theater productions where there are site-specific locations, such as those taking the production outdoors in front of the actual street art and using it as a backdrop to enhance the other features of the production and the performers' actions or interactions with the street art. A difference between street art and theater is that street art is usually done without permission 
and is non-commissioned, while theater has some regulations in order to make the production profitable and or appropriate for its targeted audience. While both are forms of expression, street art is created more from the individual than from a collective group such as theater. Mostly, street art is a representation of an artist's emotions or a story that they want to tell through the art. Theater, theater, on the other hand, is just a production that has a plot and is made to appeal the audience and their emotions. Nevertheless, both show an ability of artistic integrity and are acceptable forms of expression. Since the last couple of years, it has become common for artists to portray other art forms in their art pieces, and street art is an example of this. Some of the places where this is becoming more and more common are places such as New York City, as well as in cities abroad, such as in Paris. There are, of course, many other cities that have street art as well, but cities such as these play a huge role because they are known to be cities who have the most tourists. This means that the idea of street art is being spread to a wide range of cultures from all over the world. The idea of dance and street art is being incorporated by painting people who are dancing or listening to music, along with captions that say, it's time to dance. Artists seem to incorporate a lot of the color gray into these paintings, aiming for a minimalistic look. Not only are they painting pictures of people dancing, but it's also coming for street dancers to look for places with various forms of street art. They claim that this scenery often inspires their creativity to different dance movements. What's even more fascinating about all this is that street art is being normalized more during this time, which allows for the diversification of it and other forms of art. When it comes to music and the street art, hip hop and street art are strictly linked, both being subcultures born on the streets of the United States. While 1970s and 1980s saw graffiti and hip hop linked, the 1900s and 2000s saw the emergence of a new breed of street artists who had been inspired by rock and punk music. Many were inspired by the skateboarding and design culture. Two of the most well-known names in modern street art have been associated with the rock and roll side of music. The first being Banksy. Even though sometimes it appears that graffiti and street art are now an accepted part of the art world and the use by musicians of imagery can be just seen as a marketing ploy, one shouldn't forget that many were inspired by music to go out and create. Such is the case with artists like Deface, inspired by hip hop and punk along with skateboarding. For many years, music and art have been working hand in hand. For example, Warhol, who had produced and collaborated artistically with the Velvet Underground, and he has made it possible to find a whole new generation of artists inspired by the rhymes of their favorite songs. Even if nowadays working with street artists can be part of a marketing strategy, artists like Deface is really inspired by musicians and music in general and has made his, this world his daily activity. The link between music and street art is inevitable. So much work, I check it like a number